Welcome to Wonder Yoga, my name is Alyssa. I have some wonderful mummers-to-be in my life at the moment, so by popular demand I've put together some stabilizing and mobilizing movements that are safe to do during pregnancy. Now it's important to know that I am not a mother myself and I'm not pregnant and I am definitely not a medical professional. So do take the advice of your own doctor or medical professional if at any point you experience pain or difficulty breathing, please stop what you're doing. If you are new to yoga, most of these movements will be safe for you to do, but if there is anything that feels really unfamiliar, very new to your body, please do modify as needed and truly listen to your body. If anything doesn't feel good to you, there is no need to push through it. Go easy, go slow, and just do what is right for you at whatever stage of pregnancy you're at. Now, if you're not pregnant, I'm sure you'll still enjoy these movements. They can help to assist with any lower back pain or instability, also around the pelvis, and just helping to bring awareness to the core structure of your body, postural alignment and moving with stability and control. You could choose to do this practice without any props, just make sure you've got a little bit of space around you. If you did want to use props, you could use a chair, a yoga mat, a small cushion, perhaps a big cushion or a stack of cushions, and a blanket may be helpful as well. And make sure you're wearing clothes that are comfortable. I'm sure if you're pregnant, you already are wearing loose-fitting clothing that you can easily move in. This video is called New Life. So it's a more energizing and uplifting practice. Please start in a child's pose. Come over onto hands and knees first. And bring your knees a little bit wider apart. Sit right back onto your heels. Now, if you want to have something in front of you, you could have a small pillow for your head. And as we rest forward and bring your forehead to the pillow. If you need to be a little bit higher, you could grab yourself a bigger cushion or even a stack of cushions, maybe a blanket. And then ease your way forward from here. Just turning your head to the side. So we want lots of space underneath you. Allow your hips to sit right back towards your heels. Another alternative is to have a blanket behind your thighs, just to give you a little bit more support if your hips are sitting high. So getting comfortable here. Allow your lower back and hips to relax and feel heavy. So even if you're not pregnant, this is a lovely pose to come to whenever you're feeling any lower back strain or pain. Let your breath move right back into your body, feeling the back of your ribs expand and condense. If you're turning your head, make sure you turn it to the other side as well. breaths. 
and then push your way up to seated again. Sitting back onto your heels, bring your hands up to your thighs and we'll just lift the chest, push your belly forward and then pull your belly in towards your spine and round out. Pull the shoulders back, lengthen up through the front of the body and then pulling in just one more time. And bring your hands in front of you. Stack your knees directly beneath your hips. Shins are parallel. Spread your fingers. And extend one leg back. Just tuck toes under and ease through the ankle, rocking back and forth. Switching to the other side. knees under hips again let's move the let's move through a cat cow sequence so you may find that in this position automatically if you are pregnant your belly wants to drop down towards the floor it might feel like a relief to have the weight pull away from your spine so just breathe here Big and full. And then we'll reverse the movement coming into cat. So we'll draw the belly right up in towards the spine. Let your back arch. Really try and lengthen down through the lower back. Moving with control into our cow pose. So try not to just let everything drop. We want to press belly button towards the floor. Eye gaze ahead of you. Shoulders gently drawing away from ears. Shoulder blades hugging into your back body. And then round out again. Now start to move in time with your breath. So it may feel more natural to breathe in as you're lengthening through here and to breathe out as you scoop in. making your way into a neutral position. So we've got a lovely long spine. We're not dropping through. We're not arching. We're thinking about lengthening the crown of the head away from the tailbone and then curve through the side body, moving shoulder towards your hip and around to the other side. Keep moving from one side to the other. So you may be able to look back towards your foot. Sway into it as much as you want to. And then reset again, bring the knees a little bit wider, sit back and let's relieve our wrists. Circling, moving fingers, Coming to hands and knees again. Set your neutral spine. So a little bit of tension in the abdominals. The feeling of hugging your belly or your baby right up in towards the spine without arching. Plant down into the hands and then send your right leg out long just to hip height so we're not twisting open. We're keeping the kneecap pointing down towards the floor. 
and then bring your knee up towards you. Now, depending on how much space you have, you might come a little bit wider towards the elbow, or you could be coming up through the middle towards your nose. Send the leg out long and draw it in with control. Now this time, if you're feeling steady and stable, you can float the other hand. Make sure you're not dropping in the middle, so we're still pulling in through the belly. Reaching the other arm up by your ear, if you can get that high without losing your posture. Okay, so sending the toes as far from your fingers as you can. Try not to collapse into the shoulder. Then bring both hands down, tuck your toes to the floor. Spin the other foot, the left foot, out to the side, land the right heel, and push your hips forward so we're making one long line with the body. With the right arm, let's sweep out and up. Either hold or you could move your arm right over by your ear. Another breath and return to hands and knees. Let's do the same on the other side. Left leg shoots out, so there might be a little squeeze in the glute. Stabilize your posture, then draw knee in, either up through the middle or slightly more towards the elbow. Shoot it out, and draw it in. Send it out long, hold still, keep your hips level. Make that lifted leg strong and keep pulling in through the belly button. Option to float the other arm off. Hold for another breath. And then touch down, bring toes to the floor. Spin the other foot out. Shoulder over wrist. Plant that heel so that will help to also rotate the hips so they're stacked. Now sweep the arm open and high, and if you want, reach all the way over. Touch down. Reset. Let's do that same thing again. So right leg shoots out, knee curls in. Right leg out, breath in, breath out, bring it in. Shoot the other arm. And then touch down, spin the left foot out, land the heel, sweep your arm high or all the way over. If you're feeling steady, you can even float the foot off. Touch down, come onto your knees, knee in, extend. So we've switched sides. Knee in, go long. Lost count that time. <laughs> I think that was an extra one. And then reach the arm out. Hold another breath. Touch down, spin the foot out, land the heel, bring your hips forward, so we're squeezing the glutes, arm over, right the way, maybe float the leg off, if you can do it and hold your balance, and touch down. From your hands and knees, let's rock our weight forward, Tuck the toes under and then rock your way up into a down dog. Now keep your knees as bent as you want to here. Plant down into your fingers. Send your tailbone up high. So maintaining this lovely long posture. Then if you want to, you can start to move the heels just a little bit lower. If you can do it without moving your torso. Okay, so we're not hunching, just so that we can get the heels down. That will get you nowhere. 
little soft bend, pushing the weight right back towards your legs. Just holding for a couple more breaths. And then let's come off our hands for a bit. So we'll walk feet all the way up to our hands. They're either hip width apart or a little bit wider into shoulder width. Start with forearms to thighs. And you can either stay up here if you're inclined to feel a little bit dizzy when you invert, or you can come lower, tipping hips up and draping your body down. Let your arms hang loose or hold on to elbows. Bring in some movement if it feels good, depending on how energetic you're feeling today. Okay, and then bring your hands to the floor and step both feet back into a plank position. Now try and bring your hips down to shoulder height if you can and bring your weight all the way forward. So you might just rock forward and back a few times. Now bring your right knee to the floor, spin the foot out, open your side plank with the option of lifting the leg off, reach away and touch down, passing through plank. Other knee down, foot turns out, land the heel and open. Reaching over here, touch down, passing through plank. And then walk your feet all the way up to your hands, coming into slightly wider forward fold. Hang out. Now keeping our feet around shoulder width apart, we're coming halfway up, so you can use forearms to your thighs, you could use your hands to your thighs, you could be a bit higher depending on the strength of your quads and of course your balance, or you can sit lower and if you want to come with me, let's sweep arms up. Take a breath and then send your hips high and release hands down. Now you could also have a block to bring your hands onto so that you can stay a bit higher or you can let yourself hang completely down. Let's do this again. So hands to thighs, stay here or sweep arms up, drop right back into your heels, send your hips up and drape your body down. Let's do this one more time. Coming up, hold, maybe bring in the arms. Stay for an extra breath. Tip and fold. Now heel toe the feet in, round about hip width apart, and shoot the left leg back. Stay up on those back toes and climb on up. Now make sure you're not walking on a tightrope, even at the best of times that's hard to balance. <laughs> so keep your feet tracking around hip width apart. Just find my balance here. Spread the toes, drop in. You can either keep hands to hips, you can keep your hand on your thigh, or you could sweep your arms up. Now bend the back knee, trying to maintain your posture. So we're slightly drawing in through the belly without letting your back banana. Lengthening down through the lower back. And then pull your elbows down slightly back from your shoulders. Extending up. Shift your body forward and step in to your forward fold. This time, right leg back. So try and stay right up on the big toe without letting the foot turn out to the side. Drive down into the front heel. Use a hand on your thigh if you need it, 
maybe hands to hips or sweeping arms up. Dip the back knee, so shift your weight back a bit. Pull your elbows down. Reach on up, wobbling is fine. Shift your weight forward and step in to your forward fold. Just hang out here. Maybe move from side to side or stay in that higher position. It's always an option for you. Let's do it again. Left leg shoots back. Find your balance first. Now you could, could come straight into it, sweeping arms up. Dip the back knee. So notice where you need to hold strong, maybe a bit of a squeeze in this glute. Pulling up through the pelvic floor, in through the belly. Elbows pull down. Reach on up. Now shift your weight forward, lengthen that back leg. Shift your weight completely into the front leg. Sweep arms down and back. Now you've got the option of lifting the back leg off. You could hold on to something if you need to, if it's nearby. Or you can keep your toes on the ground, but bring all the weight into this front leg. So there's a little bit of a squat happening here. All right, fingertips to the floor. Let's step into our forward fold. You might be feeling a little bit uneven. Right leg shoots back. Find balance first, then drag your arms up. Dip the back knee, pull your elbows down. Extend, choose where you want to go from here. Weight fully into the front leg, keep a little bend in the standing knee. Arms down and back. Option to lift the back leg off or keep the toes really light. And then step in to your forward fold. Up high down low or with some movement. We're doing that one more time. Left leg back, sweep on up, drop on in, keep the squat in the front leg, shift your weight forward, Drag the back leg off or keep the toes light. Arms down and behind if you're not holding onto something. Hold right here. This time we're lifting that back leg through. Keep your hips level. Knee lifts, arms sweep up. If you touch down, that's fine too, or you can stay there or float off. Now dive again. You choose how far you want to tip your body forward and then come into your forward fold. Let's do the same on the other side. Right leg back. Drag arms up. Drop on in. Extend, shifting forward. Keep coming all the way. Arms pulled down and behind. Lifted leg comes through. Hold steady. Dive again. Little bend in the standing leg for stability. And then come into your forward fold. Now if you're feeling really energetic today, you could pause the video and do that sequence one more time on each side. Okay, step one leg back and pivot so you're in a wide leg forward fold. Bring your hands in front of you and again you can have something to lean on. If you want to be a bit higher it could be a stack of books, it could be a chair. So a chair works really well too. Part of cushions can be a little precarious. Bring the outer edges of your feet parallel Drive back into your heels, spread your toes, 
and then tip your hips high and lengthen your body forward. Now notice if you are automatically dropping your belly, let's slightly pull your belly up towards your spine to flatten out the lower back. And just notice what you're feeling here. So it might be a big stretch down the sides of the legs, maybe the inner thighs, maybe the groin, just depending on where you are tight in your body. So we'll keep the weight forward, shoulders over wrists. And then start to walk your hands back towards your feet, or the invisible line between your feet. Still tipping the hips high. Here you might find that you bend the knees a little bit more and pull up through the quads just like in our forward fold, we don't want to be pushing the knees back and we want to be focusing on keeping the spine long so we're not hunching here. Okay, we want to be hinging from hips, lengthening the chest forward. And then ease your way back from there. Support your body as much as you need to, if you're propped up on something. Try and maintain your posture. Okay, step your hands forward again, spin your heels in, toes out, crease your knees as wide as they'll go and bring hands up to your thighs. Sit the hips low, drop back into your heels, spread your toes open and if you can, reach arms up, drop in, now stretch up tall, bring hands together and sink nice and low again, breathe open, reach to the top, all the way down, if it's too much with the arms then you can just have hands to your hips. So keep drawing in, lengthening down through the lower back, stretch on up, coming down and we'll rise one more time, optional arms with me, releasing down, keep coming all the way, spin toes in, press into the heels, lift your hips high and drape your body down. Choose your position, high or low. Support as much as you need. Okay, now let's scoop one leg under. Come and take a seat and shoot one leg out long. Now here, you could bring a foot to your inner thigh or have it a little bit further away, just depending on what you need, how much space you have and whether you feel like you're tipping backwards. So you might find that if you are naturally falling backwards, you want to have the foot a bit further away from you. So we'll lean in towards the long leg. If you can reach it, take hold. You might even have some cushions here to rest on. Just notice what you're feeling here, so there should be no discomfort in the lower back. Sitting up. Now bend up, let me move it the other way, bend up this knee, 
sit up tall, flex that back foot and drive your knee down into the floor. So we're not putting all of our weight into our hands. If you need to have the hands down, then you can rest some weight onto them and then turn towards this front knee and lean in towards it. So really focus on this back hip and pushing the knee into the ground. So we want to be rolling the hip around. So let your whole body spiral around. Keep lifting and lengthening out to the crown of the head and see if you can just slightly lighten the hands. So you may find that all of your weight is resting on the hands, but can you just drive yourself away from the ground? So feel a bit more tension in the hips. Working on creating the stability. Hold and breathe. Now sitting up again, bring your hands behind you and lift your chest, pull shoulder blades towards each other. If there is any pain in your knee, just extend that leg out for a bit. And then sitting up, let's bring this knee into the bent position again. Hand under your shoulder and lift the hips off. Now you can keep your hand to your hip or you could sweep it up and over. If there is any pain in your lower back, come out of it, just come on down or see if you can move yourself into a position that feels good. Let's hold for one more deep breath in and slowly ease your way back up. Coming around to the other side, shoot the leg out long, foot tucks in up close or further away, leaning in towards the leg, optional cushions. So maybe they're there just to lean on or to lie all the way forward, depending on your flexibility. So we want to be feeling this in the hamstring, maybe a little into the calf as well, depending on how tight you feel. No pain in the lower back. That is always so important. We're trying to actually reduce the pain in the lower back, not, not move into poses that aggravate. So listen to your body. Sitting up again, bend up the knee. Now you may find that you start to fall backwards in this pose. Support yourself as much as you need to. Focus on rotating this hip down and in, rolling the knee into the floor. Gently rotate towards this front knee. So you can bring as much weight as you need to in your hands, but try not to collapse into the pose. We want to be lifted, strong, building stability here. So keep that back leg really active. Let's sit back out of it for a bit. Any knee discomfort, straighten out the leg. Now coming on up, hand under shoulder. So remember this is optional. If you don't feel good lifting your hips off, then just stay down. But if you do want to follow me, let's lift up, optional arm over here, or just bring it to your hip. Look up if you can. Or you can look down towards your hands. Just 
Try and drive down into your feet. See how strong you can make this pose. With your out breath, lower all the way back down. Give your legs a wee shake out. come into simple cross legs. You can be on the floor or on a cushion. So the cushion will just help to raise the pelvis a little more. Make sure it's not so squishy that you actually feel less stable though. That's really important too. So you want a fairly firm cushion or sitting on the edge of a chair is fine too, with your feet flat to the floor. One hand onto each knee, sitting up tall and proud, lift and lengthen, but if you find that your chest and belly pop forward, let's just gently contain them, bring them in, find that beautiful alignment from hips to shoulders to the crown of the head. Now sweep one arm behind, fingertips on the floor. It also works if you're on a chair, you can have your hand on your thigh. Keep rotating around, so we're turning through the middle of the spine, not talking the lower back, okay? So we want to stabilize the pelvis, turn through the rib cage, turn through the shoulders, and turn your head, so eye gaze, towards back corner. Keep focusing on your breath. Deep in the pose, turning a little further with each out breath. So you may find that you're moving slightly, just kind of easing back with the in breath, rotating with the out breath, easing back and turning further. Come around to the front again. Just a breath to reset your posture and then float the other hand back. Think about where you're rotating through your spine. Facing forward again, just reset. We'll stay in an upright position. Just for the last part of our class. Internalizing your focus again, feeling your posture, feeling the movement of your breath. Notice where your mind goes and see if you can guide your attention back into the space. Just to what's here, feeling into your body and feeling the movement of breath in your torso.
Let's all take one more breath together to finish our class. Float arms wide. Sweep them all the way up. Connect at the top. And with your out breath, come down your centre. Landing at your heart space. Namaste. Thank you for sharing your time with me and I wish you well on your journey.